the V7 six and a half inch 300 blackout barrel. Let's check it out. There's been a raging debate over 5.56 versus 7.62 by 3.9. The AR versus the AK, uh, you know, heavier bullet versus a lighter, faster bullet. And so there's been a huge search for that in-between round, that perfect sweet spot. Uh, both rounds have been battle proven, both are capable. But really finding that perfect caliber is an ongoing thing. And that's one of the reasons why the 300 Blackout was developed. It was actually inspired by the 300 Whisper, and this is from the AAC Corporation, which designed the 300 Blackout. This caliber was really designed for a suppressed gun. I mean, it's one of those that you can shoot out to distance if you want, but also shoot up close and personal in a CQB situation. And really designed around a 9-inch barrel for suppressed rifles. Uh, today we're looking again at the V7 6.5 inch 300 blackout barrel. Uh, one of the big pluses for this barrel is obvious. <laughs> it's tiny. It is short. And it makes this pistol just a little small package. Now Joel Allen from V7 Weapon Systems actually got his start from Nevesky. Worked there for a number of years. And then started his own company with V7 Weapon Systems and makes some of the best AR-15 barrels on the market. Is always testing, always trying to perfect his systems. And this barrel is just a work of art. Now while I have a lot of AR-15s in a number of different calibers, 300 Blackout is my second uh, most popular. And of course the first is 5.56 where the rifle was designed around. But 300 Blackout gives you a lot of capability above 5.56. I mean, 5.56 has its advantages for sure, especially at distance. But the 300 Blackout gets closer to that 7.62 by 3.9, the AK performance. And yet, it's even better. It has less drag on the bullet because the bullet's narrower. Uh, it functions better in the AR-15 because it uses AR-15 brass as its base. And so, this is, to me, a perfect home defense or suppressed uh, option. The 300 Blackout was designed with the military in mind as a caliber that could be suppressed and yet still be supersonic and used like your standard AR-15 rifle. Now the first thing let's do is make sure the gun is unloaded, magazine's empty, and the chamber is clear. One of the big advantages of the 300 Blackout in an AR-15 is it functions well with barrels down to four and a half inches. <laughs> I mean it's incredible. Uh, these really are optimized at 9 inches with certain rounds. That is the length that AAC actually designed this caliber. Uh, and then, of course, you know, it goes on out to 16 inches. And their advantages, of course, you have your supersonic loads and your subsonic loads. I'm not going to get into a lot of that, even though there's a lot of detail to it. I do have a video, uh, the 300 Blackout, why is it, you know, what's the big deal? You can check that out. I'll have it annotated right here. It gets into a lot more of the detail of 300 Blackout. The big thing we're looking at today, though, is this barrel. And being six and a half inch, uh, is it reliable? And I'll just tell you up front, it is reliable, but there are certain things that you need to do to make it uber reliable. And, you know, there are some considerations that we're going to look at if you're going to go with a short barrel like this. Now, the barrel we're going to be using is a six and a half inch, 300 blackout barrel. Uh, this is the perfect size if you want to make a very compact pistol or an SBR, and of course, you can suppress it which that's really where 300 Blackout comes into its own. Uh, this is a 416R stainless steel, and it has a black nitride finish on the extension and then kind of an anodized finish uh, on the barrel itself. 
The Rockwell hardness is 3032. Uh, the barrel twist is 1 and 7, and it is poly rifling. It's a medium contour barrel, and uh, it is metal lapped. These barrels are just really uh, well produced barrels. Uh, one thing about this system, too, is it uses a straight uh, gas rod. And that's because of the length, it makes it really short. We're also going to need one of the V7 proprietary gas blocks. Uh, this is raised in height just a little bit uh, to accommodate the straight gas tube. The barrel is dimpled for your gas block, but there's also a groove cut here. And you have a roll pin that's going to run through. So this is going to be pretty much bomb proof uh, once you put this gas block on here. And that's one of the weak points sometimes of AR if it's not dimpled. And especially this reinforced uh, roll pin is going to really help to secure this gas block into place. Now the barrel extension is actually a true 30 caliber improved barrel extension. You know, most of your barrels are made in the 5.56 configuration, but this is made for 300 blackout, and it does have the extended feed ramps. But you can see it's just a very quality finished barrel, and uh, the manufacturing processes are very high. Uh, right here stamped on the barrel, of course, is the caliber, and then we have V7. The barrel is crowned and it has a 5H by 24 thread pitch. And this is going to accept your 30 caliber muzzle devices. Now because this is a 6.5 inch barrel, there's special consideration with your handguard. You need to have one small. V7s offers their enlightened handguard, which is a 5.7 inch handguard, which will be perfect for this barrel size. Uh, at the time, I ordered a BCM 7 inch handguard. And because of that, I couldn't use a standard muzzle brake with ports on the side. Um, and so instead, I got one of the uh, Midwest Industries, and this is the blast diverter. All the ports are facing forward, so it keeps it out of the way. Uh, if you're going to put a suppressor on here, you'll probably want to go ahead and get the Enlightened Handguard from V7s. And you can go to the V7s Weapon System uh, website and check out. Um, they have the M-Lock and the key mod. If you install a muzzle brake that has ports underneath the handguard, over time it's going to destroy that handguard. Now with the 6.5 inch barrel, it's important to use the minimum of an H1 buffer. Uh, if you use your standard buffer, you're going to have reliability issues, and that was one of the problems that I had starting out. I used a standard buffer. I got in touch with Joel, and he said I needed to switch that out to at least an H1. According to your muzzle device, uh, whether it's a suppressor or, you know, even a compensator, you may have to go with an H2. But buffers are not that expensive. That's just one of the issues if you're having any kind of reliability problems. It's going to be related to the buffer. Now here we have 5.56 on the right, 300 blackout, and 7.62 by 3.9. Uh, one of the big problems with 7.62 by 3.9 in an AR-15 is it's tapered. And this is really harsh on the gas system. Uh, the bullet also is a little more bull-nosed here, a little more surface going this way, where the 300 is more straight. So this is going to give this longer range. It's going to give it better energy. And uh, with the 5.56 case, it's more straight-walled, so it feeds and performs well in an AR-15. Uh, with the 5.56, you've got some really high velocity. You've got really longer ranges but you don't have the energy that you get with the 300 blackout. And also the 5.56 is more difficult to suppress. It's more difficult to get it under supersonic, which you can easier with the 300 blackout. I'm not gonna get into a lot of the details on velocity and energy and things like that, but mainly to say, because there's a lot of information out there, but the big thing is the 300 blackout has a lot of advantages to hit that sweet spot between the two. Now it's definitely uh, has its limitations as well, so that's up to you to decide if this is the round for you. Another big advantage of the 300 blackout are the different bullet weights that are offered. Uh, Lehigh Defense offers a 78 grain bullet, while there are a lot of subsonic loads that go all the way up to 220 grain. So you've got a wide variety of ammunition choices to fit a number of different rolls. And that is big. This is a 150 grain bullet. It is supersonic. The velocity in 150 grain is around 1,700 feet per second. Uh, if you go up to the 220 grain, you're getting down to about 940 feet per second. And with a 110 grain VMAX, you're getting up to about 2,075 feet per second. So again, there's a, just a lot of different considerations. Now there are a lot of different choices out there for 300 blackout barrels. That's your big part. I mean, everything else you can use the same. Your bolt, your bolt carrier group. 
uh, your magazines. Even though Magpul has now come out with a 300 blackout specific magazine, uh, the, I've never had any problems with the 5.56 mags. But the big difference with this AR is the barrel, and that is the heart of your rifle. And Joel Allen, who started V7s, again, worked for Noveski for a number of years, and Noveski is well known for its superior quality. Joel took that to V7s, and that is exactly what he's producing. I want to thank Freedom Munitions for supplying the uh, 300 Blackout. Uh, this is 147 grain, new manufactured. Also have some 220 grain subsonic hush. This is also from Freedom Munitions. Get a 5% discount using Such00 at checkout on Freedom Munitions website. Now with a barrel length of six and a half inches, I had some concerns that we might have some reliability issues. I mean, that is a short gas system. It's a short barrel in an AR-15. Uh, and we went to the range and we did. We had some issues to where it wouldn't completely eject the spent case before it tried to feed another one. And this happened a few times. And so I got in touch with Joel and asked him about it. And he said, you've got to use at least an H1 buffer and above. Um, but the H1 buffer should do it, but if you're still having problems, mainly because of a compensator, if your compensator is really blowing out a lot of concussion, that you might need an H2. And so I switched to the H1 and had zero malfunctions after I put in the H1. Now, of course, outside of the initial problems that we had uh, going to the range with the H1 buffer, we had no malfunctions at all. I mean, it just ran. It's so short. It's so compact. And in a pistol form, uh, you know, either whether it was this little tail hook or with the PDW SB Tactical Brace. I mean, that was a sweet shooting gun. I think this is a really tiny package for anything that you would need, like a truck gun, even for home defense. I mean, it is small. It doesn't stick way out. And if you needed to maneuver with it, if you're going through a house, uh, you don't have to worry about that barrel, that extra barrel length, if you're using an AR-15 as your home defense gun. Um, and then with 300 Blackout. Now, definitely the 300 Blackout shines with a suppressor. And we could have put a suppressor on here, but we wanted to test it as is, just to make sure that it was functioning right. And it did. Uh, hopefully coming up, we'll get a suppressor to put on here and take it out to the range. I tell you what guys, you put this little package in your hand and it is sweet to shoot. One thing that I would recommend though, is maybe putting more of a stop on the end of the muzzle here, because it's so short, you don't want to get past <laughs> to where your muzzle is because you could really mess up your hand. So I think that would be one recommendation I had. I did put on this little BCM uh, quick detach mount just as a reminder to keep my hand there. Uh, but I think I might put on something a little bit longer. It is a unique size, six and a half inches, tiny. And so uh, it gives you a lot of ability with that small package. But there are some considerations that you'll have to make if you're gonna choose this barrel length. Now, as far as accuracy goes, I was shooting at 50 yards. Uh, because I have the Trigicon MRO, it's just a red dot. And I really thought I needed to put a magnified optic to find out the accuracy of this pistol. The first group here, there's four shots together. I had one flyer and I knew I had that one. Uh, and then I came in and shot two groups. Uh, this one was kind of a string, but the last, I just kind of hunkered down. And at 50 yards, I got this group. All those, that's four shots in one hole, and then we have just a little bit of a one that dropped down. Uh, this gun is capable of one MOA at 100 yards, even with a six and a half inch barrel. And we're going to look at that coming up, because I really want to take this out and test it some more with the accuracy by putting on, you know, at least a four power scope to get some decent accuracy. But guys, it's capable of good accuracy. And this is with the Freedom Munitions 147 grain full metal jacket ammo. 
V7 offers a number of different barrels from 556, of course, 300 Blackout, um, 308, 458 SOCOM, 6.5 Creedmoor, and a 1022 barrel. Now, V7 quality comes with a price. Uh, the 6.5 inch 300 Blackout barrel is $299 on the V7 website. These are top quality barrels. There's a lot of barrels, a lot of systems out there, but if you're really looking for something that is superior, uh, you're definitely going to get it with the V7. Now, when you get to these shorter length barrels, you know, and with the gas system that they have uh, that's proprietary to this barrel, you can have reliability issues with inferior quality. And with V7s, you're going to get reliability. Again, you're going to need to use at least an H1 buffer and H2, possibly, if it's according to, you know, your muzzle brake. But with this one, with the H1 buffer, it was it ran flawlessly. With the standard buffer, we did have issues, but it was a very easy fix just to switch it out. But again, the quality of the V7 is top-notch. You're not going to get any better. Uh, here I have my uh, BCM set up with it, which to me is a perfect match because BCM is top-notch as well. Pros and cons of the 6.5-inch V7 barrel. Uh, for one thing, there are some considerations, you know, with the handguard, I had to get something that was small and yet had to get a compensator that would kind of move the gas forward, uh, which no big deal. I mean, Midwest Industries, I think this was $35. I think so. I got it on eBay and, uh, you know, it just really made a good solid package. But this would make an excellent gun to put a suppressor on uh, the, with this barrel length. And so I think that's that's a huge plus. What is the biggest plus though is that this is such a tiny, tiny package. And uh, you know, you can really maneuver it. It's very concealable. Uh, it's easy to stow. And there's just a lot of advantages with a pistol with this kind of barrel on it. I wanna thank Joel from V7's Weapon Systems for the sponsorship and for sending the six and a half inch barrel for this test and evaluation. Uh, the quality is excellent. And you know, we did a review on the 11 and a half inch blackout barrel from V7 a couple of years ago. It really introduced me to the quality of V7. And so if you're looking for high quality, well-made parts uh, for your AR-15, whether 556 or 300 blackout, check out V7 Weapon Systems. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. But finding really the perfect, I mean, it's just great for, you know, that it just, in barrels from four and a half. Okay. So really the big difference with this rifle, the big difference with this pistol. So I think that I really like the system being small is the huge, there's the way, it outweighs everything. And uh, we're shooting some of the, uh, what is this? <laughs>